Strange things are afoot. Inside the steering wheel. How easy it is to replace this. I've watched a lot of videos, and I'll tell you guys, when, you, when you've got one at home and you're working with a, a blown out a bag, you can't see inside the steering wheel. So the videos are showing you this. They tell you to go in with a screwdriver, and if Corey will pan around, you'll see the little holes here on the side of the steering wheel, which is correct. That's why the holes are there. And they're telling you to put a screwdriver through that. But what I want to show you is this. This is what I came up with that works so much better. It's just a little uh, cheap uh, piece of uh, uh, just bent rod. Actually, I think this is one of my wife's landscaping uh, uh, spikes. So it's about uh, maybe an eighth quarter inch in diameter round. But here's what, what, what I did after messing with this thing for about an hour. So I'm gonna go into the, uh, the place here. Again, just insert it. Okay. So, and they are right on the other videos. They say four o'clock. So of course it would be eight o'clock on this side. So I'm gonna let Corey look inside the wheel here for you. And you can see the, uh, the spike coming through. And they are, again, they're correct. You're gonna, just remember, you're looking at this. You don't see this, not yet. So when you go in at that eight o'clock on the left side, four o'clock on the right side, when you go in, notice it go, just, just keep, Keep a little pressure and push it through. Here's the main thing that will help you more than anything. The pressure on the uh, screwdriver, if you choose to use one, and I, I won't in the future. I'm gonna use this, uh, this round spike uh, rod. Keep the pressure pulling towards you, which keeps this end of it against the uh, aluminum plate inside the steering wheel. When you're working blind, and going by what the videos, the other videos I watched it, they don't tell you to do that. But the main thing is keep the pressure the other way. So once you do that, here's what happens. Keep the pressure in and when it comes to a stop, just very easily back it out. And I'll, see when it gets to that point, you'll be able to go up with it. So keep a little pressure, not only towards you, but downward as you back it out and all of a sudden it'll, it'll yield. So there, now just, just imagine with your eyes closed, as long as you got pressure pulling towards you, when it, when it comes free, then start pushing it in, keeping that pressure towards you, and look what happens. She goes right to that spring. That's what you wanna do, so watch what happens. It pushes the spring out of the way, which releases it from the prong on the up airbag and if you'll notice on the bottom, it's also releasing the, the lower one. So keep pushing and don't worry about how much you have to push. You'll know it because that, the pressure that comes from the spring on the horn button, actually when this comes out of the slot, spring comes out of the slot on the airbag part here, it'll snap out towards you. You'll have about a half an inch, all of a sudden she comes out. So you know you've got it and then you repeat that process on the other side. So that setting inside here, it just snaps out. You can see the snaps, that's the way it comes out. You'll notice I've got a broken one. You'll also notice this, look at all the scrapes here. That's from me trying to use a screwdriver in there, working blind and not knowing what I know now. And what I know now is keeping that pressure towards me so that the end of my probe is staying against the metal as opposed to doing it the other way and that screwdriver or the probe coming up here and damaging this. It actually broke this. You can see it right there. But, you know, you're talking $35, $36 for a replacement. You probably could epoxy that, but as far as putting all this together, what I did, I just ordered a new one from the Chevrolet place. My buddy at the Outer Bank Chevrolet here uh, got that for me within a day. So I'm putting in a new one. But the main thing is, keep the pressure the other way. So what I did, I just ordered me two, two new leads, which is fine. What I'll do is exactly what GM has done here. I'll take this loose. I'll solder these together very well. And then I'll actually use some, uh, after I finish, heat shrink tubing. Put it right on top of it. And then you'll notice you've got pink and you've got purple. And I'll tell you up front, 
these are not all the same because I ordered two sets. I was a little smart about that. It was a, a question of whether or not which one I wanted to use, but I've noticed, if you notice the little uh, inset, little, little prong there, that's in different positions. The other set that I've got doesn't fit. These fit. So it'll snap right on there after it's soldered in, and then I'll be ready to put this bag back together. But also, on your horn relay, these are your leads for your horn relay, one on each side. That just goes there. This one goes here. Once I get that in, I'll snap that in, as so. All of that soldered in, as so. I hook those two leads up to the back of the airbag module. And once all of that's in there, tuck it away, put your airbag in it, snap it in. And guess what, guys? You're ready to go.